open up with Todd Romero from Altitude Sports. Hey, Coach, uh, the level of belief of this basketball team as you went into it, every, the goal remained the same despite the injuries. When you win like you have and built the confidence, how has that, how has that helped your team going along and into this series? I mean, it's, uh, it's a powerful thing, you know, belief. Belief in oneself, uh, belief in the collective unit. Um, I think this team, every time we've been faced with adversity, Todd, we, we found ways to overcome it. Uh, and so the next time that adversity comes to you, you're not running from it. You kind of embrace it. You get used to it. You're comfortable with the adversity. Um, and that's the amazing thing. I mean, I, I don't know how many playoff teams uh, in NBA history have won a series with their starting backcourt out. Uh, so, yes, it speaks to Nikola Jokic, but it also speaks to everybody else stepping up and, and not running from the opportunity that's being given to them now. Um, so, yeah, I think belief is a very powerful thing. Uh, and I think our guys, you know, we're going to be the underdogs again this series. And, uh, you know, we don't mind that. You know, I, I think we're really comfortable with that. And uh, we've continued to find ways to overcome that adversity and prove a lot of people wrong. So it would be a hell of a challenge. Obviously, this is a really good team in the Phoenix Suns, but a challenge that we're looking forward to. Mike Singer, Denver Post. Hey, Mike, great to see you. Um, to follow up on that, during the Portland series, at a certain point, I remember you said you feel like you guys don't have any pressure on you. Um, what is the sentiment? What is kind of your mindset going into going into this series? Is it similar to last one, or, or is it something different? Yeah, I mean, the, the no pressure still applies. I mean, again, I think uh, nine out of ten people are picking Phoenix to win this. Understandable. They're a really good team, but um, – we're going to embrace the challenge, Mike. We're going to go into it being aggressive. Uh, we're going to try to steal home court here in game one, game two. Um, and, you know, we're expecting to win. That's our mindset. You know, we're preparing to win. We're going to go out there and expect to win every night. And if we don't, we'll be very disappointed. Uh, we're not going to use the excuse of no Jamal, no Will, no PJ. But we have who we have. Everybody has a job to do. Let's go out there and do your job to the best of your ability. Christo Saltas, SDNA Greece. Hello, coach. Hope you are doing well. How important part of your rotation is uh, Facundo Campasso, and especially his, de uh, his defensive effort? And how's your plan uh, to slow down Chris Paul with Facundo on the court? Yeah, you know, Facu, you know, for, for an NBA rookie um, starting in the playoffs uh, and, and being tasked with the responsibility of guarding a, a guy like Damian Lillard. Uh, you know, I thought Faku was tremendous in round one, uh, and I expect him to be even better this series. I think he's kind of got the playoffs feel now. He's probably going to be a little bit more comfortable as we move into the second round. Um, for our guards, for our bigs, um, we just played a hell of a backcourt in Lillard and McCollum, and it's no different in this series. Now you have Chris Paul and Devin Booker. So uh, the guards are going to have to do a terrific job of guarding them, containing them, contesting their shots from three, from mid-range, defending them without fouling. They both do a great job of drawing fouls, getting to the free throw line. Uh, but our bigs will also play a big part in that as well. The number of pick and rolls and handoffs that they will run. Uh, it's not one person who's going to stop Chris Paul. It's not one person that will stop Devin Booker. It's going to be all five guys working together uh, who are on the floor at the same time. Katie Wingy, Altitude Sports. Hey, Coach, you've, you've talked about the comparison between the backcourt of Portland and Phoenix now a couple times. And I'm just curious, what is different about what Chris Paul and Devin Booker do compared to what Damon CJ did? And what do you want to make sure carries over defensively? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, with, with Damian Lillard, uh, with the number of pick and rolls that were set for him, you know, and the drags, the double drags, the early step ups, and, and obviously Dame is in his shooting range once he crosses half court. Now Devin Booker has tremendous range as well. Uh, you know, Chris Paul is, is a very good three point shooter, but he's one of the best mid range players and shooters in the game. Uh, he gets downhill, he snakes, he keeps people on his back, uh, puts a lot of pressure on not only the guys that are in the pick and roll, but your weak side. Because as that ball is changing from one side to the other, your responsibilities as a weak side defender also change. Um, but you know, I compare them in talent. I mean, you're talking about two of the top backcourts in the entire NBA in Portland and now in Phoenix. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think that the one noticeable difference, and this is not my opinion, it's just based on the facts and the stats. You know, Phoenix is a really good defensive team. Uh, you know, we're going to have to be much better offensively, Katie, to have a chance to score uh, and keep up with them in that area. Uh, and Chris Paul, hell of a defender. Devin Booker, an improved defender. Um, so it's, it's going to be a challenge, but one that Faku, Monte, Shaq, Marcus, Austin, uh, Will, PJ, whoever, uh, all a uh, challenge that all those guys are looking forward to. Mike Singer, Denver Post. Hey, Michael. Um, Mon Monty Williams was talking about today the concern about overloading his guys with information, given the uh, given the extra time off. Do you have that same concern at all? And, and if so, or if not, what are you emphasizing these last few days um, as kind of the key priorities going into tomorrow night? Yeah, you, you always are kind of cautious, Mike, in terms of how much you give them. You know, we as coaches, we have, you know, playoff books and personnel books and analytics and stats and all that. Uh, you have to prioritize in terms of what can you give your players and what do you want your players to hold on to and retain? You know, prioritize what are the most important themes offensively and defensively going into this series? Um, so we'll overload ourselves, but for the players, you know, we want them playing and not thinking. Yes, you have to have game plan discipline. You have to have KYP discipline. But at the same time, you have to play the game uh, and be aggressive. We saw in round one, uh, when we were not aggressive, we were not a very good basketball team. So I'd rather make a few mistakes here and there, but do it while being aggressive. Uh, and what are we prioritizing? What are the things that we're talking about? Obviously, uh, transition. They did a really good job in round one in terms of their transition efficiency. Um, so getting back, make, miss, turnover, forcing them to play against the half court. Uh, now, when you're in the half court, uh, can you defend the three point line? This is number six offense in the NBA. They have, I think they shoot the seventh best percentage from three. They're number one in overall field goal percentage, uh, and they really crush it from the mid range as well. Uh, but the three point line is going to be big, especially with a guy like Devin Booker. Cameron Payne is shooting lights out off the bench. Cam Johnson, uh, Jay Crowder, we know didn't shoot it great in that first round, but he's not going to stop shooting. He can get really hot. Uh, so the three-point line is going to be big. Uh, pick and roll defense is always going to be really important when you're guarding guys like Booker and Paul, uh, and they're keeping them off the glass. On paper, they're not a great offensive rebounding team, uh, but we know that DeAndre Ayton is a load down there. Uh, long shots equal long rebounds. So we have to make sure that we're limited them uh, to one shot. Offensively, we, we got to get out and run, play with pace. If we play against their set defense all night, uh, they are a very, very good defensive team. So you have to try to push pace score some early ones, easy ones, before they can get set uh, and implement their game plan. Brandon Cristal, KOA Denver. Hey, Coach, how surprised or are you uh, at the progress DeAndre Ayton's made, the jump that he's made, or when you're picked that high, is, is that, I guess, you know, at some point you, you expect it? And then how do you defend him uh, when he is playing as well as he's playing? Yeah, I can't say I'm overly surprised. You know, um, you know, we don't know this team nearly as well as we knew Portland, uh, who was a division rival who we played in the playoffs before. And I think since 2018, we played them like 22 times. Um, so I, I don't, I can't say, Brandon, that I'm surprised with Aiton's progress, his development, how well he played in the first round. Uh, he was a number one pick, I believe, for a reason. He has terrific size, strength. Uh, he can score with his back to the basket. We've seen up close uh, firsthand his ability to dominate the offensive glass. Uh, and Nicola said it yesterday that he feels that he, he guards him um, very, very well. So, uh, you know, you, you always want to see high draft picks kind of realize their talent and, and see that potential come to fruition. And that's what you're seeing with DeAndre. And how do you guard him? I mean, like the same thing, we have to guard him like we guarded Nurkic, Cantor, whoever's in front of us, you know, you have to meet him early. You can't let him run the floor, seal, get in front of the rim. That's probably his most effective post up when Chris Paul and the guards are looking for him in transition. So do your work early, try to force him to catch it away from the basket outside the paint. Um, and then just, you know, make sure you're contesting his shots in their pick and roll game. We have to have great awareness in terms of who is tagging the roller, meeting him early and then forcing him to make plays in the pocket. So uh, I, I think it's going to be, Great to see him up close and personal here in round two. And I'm sure our big guys are up for the challenge as well. 
All right, coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Dwayne Rankin from the Arizona Republic. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coach, uh, just have a couple of things. One, um, I've just, I just looked up you guys' scores the last two years, gotten this year. You guys have won six of the seven games, but four have been decided by four points or less. Three have gone into overtime. Why do you feel like these, you, you two, when you two guys play, it come down to this, these kind of games, these type of close games, you feel? Uh, I mean, two good teams. You know, obviously, uh, I know last year um, the Suns were not able to make the playoffs, but they had a great run down in uh, in Orlando. Um, but you know, two good teams, you know, two talented teams. And, you know, obviously Devin Booker is a young star. DeAndre Ayton is a player in the making who's getting closer and closer to being the player they hoped he would be when they drafted him. Uh, you add a guy like Chris Paul, uh, Jay Crowder. Um, so you know, that's what's going to happen. I mean, they, they were... We finished third in the West. I think they finished second in the West. So um, we came in here in a back-to-back, won two overtime games this season. Obviously, both teams were not uh, with the same players that they have today. I think Book missed a second game with a hamstring injury. But I would just say, Dwayne, I think it comes down to two really talented teams that are uh, playing the right way and, and trying to get better and advance as far as they can. That'll do it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.